Hello and welcome to this video on Sociology and Science, Positivism and Popper. For about the last hundred years, or really since sociology was first invented as an academic subject, sociologists have been arguing about whether or not sociology is a science. As members of society, we tend to trust some forms of knowledge more than others, and generally speaking in contemporary society, scientific knowledge is held to be the most important or trustworthy knowledge of all. Wallace argues that there are four sources that we as humans use to gain knowledge about the world. Authoritarian sources, mystical sources, logico-rational sources and scientific sources. Authoritarian sources are derived from a person viewed as a source of wisdom. So, for example, parents to their children are the ultimate holders of knowledge and everything they say is absolutely true. Next, we have mystical sources, somebody who claims to have an insight into the true nature of the world. So this may be a person who claims to be a prophet or who claims to have spoken to God or to the divine and people may follow them in a kind of religious based sense. Next, logico-rational sources, which are based on the rules of logic, so logically working out what makes sense, what is the most sensible, that would be a form of knowledge in of itself, sometimes referred to as common sense. And finally, scientific sources, generating ideas and hypotheses, that is, testable statements, and then testing them through a variety of accepted research methods. This is seen as the most superior type of knowledge, as it uses rigorous methods which can be replicated by others. And so for some, if sociology could emulate this, this would be a positive thing. The modernist approach to science claims that it can be distinguished from other forms of knowledge by the way in which it goes about the process of understanding the world. So its actual process is what makes it special in this regard. This modernist approach stresses five key components that distinguish science from other forms of knowledge. They are the empirical, the testable, the theoretical, the cumulative, and the objective. By empirical, we mean that knowledge is gained through our senses. In practice, it means that information can be measured or counted. So we as human beings have five senses, although, of course, arguably there are more, depending on your point of view. And these senses give us data. And with that data, we are able to come to conclusions and form hypotheses. If we were to apply that same process to science, we're talking here about information being able to be collected, measured and counted. Next, testable. This means that knowledge is gained through open verification and refutation by others. So. We very openly, not secretly behind closed doors or covertly, gather data. And once we've gathered that data and we share that data with everyone else in the world or anyone who wishes to look at it, they can either seek to verify it, that is prove it true, or to refute it, that is prove it wrong. And anyone can do that. Next, the theoretical. Sociology and science share the idea of theory construction. This means that the theory seeks to uncover causal relationships between phenomena rather than simply describing them. So when we go out and do our research, we don't just simply describe what we're seeing or describe what's happening. We actually take the data, analyze the data, and then try to come up with a theory to explain what's happening. So explaining rather than describing. Next, the cumulative nature of science. Scientific theory is said to build on previous knowledge, so there is an ever-growing, empirically testable body of knowledge that moves us forward in our understanding of the world. So throughout history, we've had various different scientists who undertake research, and then other scientists come along and build on their work. We can think about Galileo and Newton and Einstein and Hawking all being within this trend. Next, science is objective. Science blocks out any personal prejudices and political views in its search for empirically testable propositions about the world. So what this means is that a scientist, when they enter their lab or when they start to do their research, they place their personal thoughts, feelings, opinions, politics and so on, on the shelf. They put it in a box and put it away. It doesn't enter into their research. They try to be as objective as possible rather than being subjective. And that should therefore mean that the data they gather is in many senses, you know, more objective, more true, if you will. If we were to apply some of these five different ideas to sociology, what we'd really be describing then is the positivist methodological perspective, which is what we've already studied looking at research methods 
and methodologies in general. This approach models itself as closely as it can to the natural sciences. It thinks of itself in that regard as a physics or a chemistry. They argue that philosophizing about the world is not enough. Statistics need to be gathered so that cause and effect could be properly proven. Sociologists adopting this scientific approach seek to uncover general laws and relationships that they believe exist in the social world. So once again, we're talking here about theory building. Both Parsons from the functionalist perspective and Marx from the Marxist perspective shared the belief that sociology is a science and they were positivists in their approach. Their work combined theory with a search for evidence to support their ideas. We tend to see empirical work now being funded by government or charities, which look into issues such as educational success, crime rates, illegal drug use, and so on, as has come up throughout the various topics and units that we've looked at so far. It's less so the case nowadays that individual sociologists, um, that is, fund their own work. Generally, that's something that's done uh, in the past. Today, you look around for sources of money to fund your research. The question, therefore, is... How do we justify sociology being a science? Or how do positivists justify sociology as being a science? Well, in terms of the empirical, positivist sociologists gather data and quantify it, just as scientists do. In terms of the theoretical, from the data they gathered, positivist sociologists create theories which identify relationships between phenomena. In terms of the objective, well, positivist sociologists seek to put their personal beliefs to one side when undertaking research, just as scientists do. In terms of testability, once published, any other individual may test their findings and theory. They may seek to verify or refute it. And in terms of the cumulative, sociologists regularly cite previous work as the basis of their own research, as we see within Marxism and indeed neo-Marxism. So in this sense, positivists may be able to justify that sociology is in fact a science. Karl Popper contributed to the philosophy of science through his concept of falsification. And through this, he made essentially an offer to sociology if it wishes to become or be understood as a science. He believed that a valid science must aim to refute hypotheses. That is, it must seek to disprove them. If social sciences were based on falsification, that is disproving things, sociology could be accepted as a science. This is when a scientist tries to find evidence to falsify or again disprove a theory. This is falsification. We can use falsification to test the following statement. Popper put forward this idea. All swans are white. That could be a hypothesis. However, if we can find a black swan, we can challenge the statement and say it is not a scientific truth. Popper thought that science can never discover the final truth, but the longer there is no falsification, the truer something is. So, when you were born, you had never seen a swan before, but when you saw your first swan, the chances are it was white. And what happened was you created a hypothesis in your mind, which was all swans are white. And every time you saw a swan after that, it was probably white. And so the statement all swans are white became truer and truer for you until one day you saw a black swan. And that therefore meant that that hypothesis was wrong. You had disproved it. You had falsified that theory. And now you had a new hypothesis, which was all swans are either white or black. And so this is what Popper's talking about. We may never know the absolute truth, but the longer there is no falsification, something will become truer, or our hypothesis will become truer. According to Popper, sociology could be accepted as a science in the way that positivists wish if it used the concept of falsification. But to achieve this, it had to propose testable hypotheses. Every statement it makes must be testable. Every theory it puts forward must be testable. Because of this, Popper rejected certain elements of sociology, for example, Marxism, as he stated that it generates concepts such as false consciousness that cannot be falsified. It is very difficult to prove or disprove that the working classes are in false consciousness because they themselves do not know they are in it. And so as a result, it's very difficult to verify that it actually exists. And so if sociology wants to be a science, it needs to jettison or get rid of all of these unprovable, untestable ideas or theories. Popper's approach differs significantly from positivism, however. Positivists use an inductive method where they examine data, create a theory and defend the theory. Popper thought that a deductive method should be used. 
This means that you start with a theory and then test it against evidence. You should operate with the concept of falsification. So you come up with the theory first, then you gather the evidence to see if you can disprove it. And if you disprove it, excellent. That means you can cross it off and move on to a new theory. However, if you can't disprove it, that doesn't mean the thing you came up with was correct. It simply means that you haven't disproved it yet. So it's on the process or path of becoming truer, even though it will never become absolutely or objectively true. However, Popper's ideas, whilst very interesting, have been criticised because scientists do defend their views by verification, not refutation. So in this sense, Popper was setting himself up as kind of the defender of science, but he has no real right to do so because really he's just a philosopher. But also, scientists themselves don't actually do the thing that he claims they do. So in a sense, perhaps he has no right at all to decide whether or not sociology is or can ever be a science. That's it. Thank you very much.